Hello there, lovely viewers. Today I thought that I'd create a, a video on getting uh, OBS set up so that you are able to stream DayZ. I know that there might be some of you out there who watch DayZ on Twitch and have always wondered uh, about starting up streaming themselves. It's not that complicated, it's usually quite straightforward, so I thought I'd go through the process of getting you up and running nice and quickly. The first thing that you're going to need to do is just to navigate uh, onto the internet, open up a browser, and just search for OBS in Google or something, uh, and it will take you to this page. You just want to click on, uh, obviously, the Windows button, as typically most of you will probably be using Windows, uh, and download and install OBS. Nice and simple, nothing too complicated here. Once you've got OBS set up and installed and you've gone through and done the next, next, next over and over and gone through the basic uh, options, which uh, configuration wizard that comes up at the beginning, you'll be presented with this lovely OBS screen. Fantastic. Doesn't it look beautiful and super complicated? It's not that complicated. It's actually quite straightforward. Um, as you can see, uh, on the bottom left, we've got scenes. Uh, and then next to that, we have sources. Um, those are the main ones which you really need to be um, getting up and running to get yourself streaming uh, a game, or Daisy in this case. Um, as you can see in the sources, there's already three things in there. That's not to complicate. Um, it's just basic stuff which I needed to get up and running. Um, the audio input capture is my microphone. And as you can see, as I'm talking, you can see my lovely microphone, uh, the volume bar going up and down. Um, in order to do that, all I did was I went down to the bottom, I clicked on add, uh, I went through and selected audio input capture. Uh, and then after that, I just double clicked on it and you can choose the device which you want to use. In this case, I'm using my cable output because I'm using an external program for my microphone. <clears throat> uh, after that, the, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is get um, yourself up and running with the configuration for Twitch. Now there's two lovely ways of doing that. You can either go to, um, where is it? File and settings at the top. Stream. You're going to select Twitch from the service and you have your stream key. Now the stream key is, is a unique key which is given to every single user on Twitch. Um, you can basically go through the connect account here, which is nice and simple and it will ask you for your username and password and then input the stream key up here. Or alternatively, you could go to a browser uh, and in this case, I'll jump over onto here. Um, you're going to go and click on the top right, click settings. You'll get this lovely screen up. Uh, you're going to navigate down to stream, and there's your primary stream key. You don't want to show that to anybody. Uh, so in this case, you just hit copy. You go back into uh, OBS. Uh, go back into the settings, back into stream, and input your key there. The next one that we want to have a look at is output. Um, in this case, uh, you, you want to choose what you're going to be streaming as. At the moment, everything is ticked off, is, is blanked out because I'm currently recording. Um, typically, most people probably have NVIDIA graphics cards. NVIDIA graphics cards have a, a lovely onboard method called NVIDIA NVENC, which is basically a, uh, an encoder which will capture your, your game uh, without using any of your CPU resources. Um, this is a really nice and simple way to get going without having to worry about whether your processor is up to uh, up to speed uh, and able to encode, which can cause uh, a load of problems. Whereas with the NVENC, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to get up and running. The quality won't be super, 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 but uh, it's it's relatively good to get started with. In this case, you, you'll choose your, your encoder here. Uh, you'll leave the rescale output, uh, the constant bit rate, so CBR. The bit rate itself, now this depends on your upload speed. Um, in my case, I think I have 15 megabit upload. Um, Twitch has a maximum cap of 6,000. Um, basically, so in that case, I'm gonna put 6,000 in there. If you had a connection of say three megabit, then you'd probably be putting a bit rate of between 2,500 and 3,000. Uh, you probably wouldn't put 3,000 because you want to allow a little bit of upload speed available for you to navigate and when gaming and stuff, otherwise you may encounter a little bit of lag. Keyframe interval will be zero. I put my preset to max quality, profile high, uh, max frames is two. 
Uh, if we then move through and go to video, this is your base canvas resolution. Um, this is basically the resolution that you're probably going to be playing the game at. Um, in this case, I play at 1440p. The output scaled resolution, at the moment, it's set to this. That's because I'm recording. Um, if you were um, going to be streaming to Twitch, I would suggest going uh, at 720. So you'd select 720 from the drop down. Um, with a common FPS value of either 30 or 60. Obviously, you can stream at 60, which makes the uh, the footage look much better, but you are gonna take a slight hit in the quality. Whereas if you do 30, there's a lot more bit rate available to um, to make the, the quality a little bit sharper. Once you've uh, gone through that, um, the next step is going to be obviously to get the game appearing on your screen. Uh, in this case, we are going to be adding a, another source down at the bottom. Now, there are three options which you can choose here. There's display capture, game capture, and window capture. Um, you don't want to be using display capture or window capture when you're streaming a game. Um, it, it doesn't look great, and it's, uh, it's not the best uh, for streaming games or, or recording games. Uh, you want to be choosing game capture. So we'd add game capture in here. You then get the, the default options, which you could just say OK on. Now you can have this option to capture any full screen application if you obviously play games in full screen. Uh, alternatively, you can do capture a specific window. I kind of like to have it like this. Uh, and then from here, I choose Daisy. From there, hit OK, uh, enable preview. I'm going to turn off this display capture. And then if I was to go into my game, Boom, you can see there's my game. Now, if you were to have an issue where when you go into the game and you alt tab back, you have a black screen, um, that's a, a common uh, issue with Daisy. Um, basically, when you load up OBS, you wanna make sure that you're running it as admin. So typically you'd hit on the start menu at the bottom, you type in OBS, you'd right click on the OBS studio and choose run as administrator. Uh, that would allow the game to be displayed properly on your OBS window. Now at this point, we would have two things uh, added on your OBS. We'd have a game capture, and we'd have your audio input capture, which would be your microphone. If you're happy for this, uh, then you are pretty much set up and ready to start streaming DayZ. Um, you can obviously go through and add additional things, like you might wanna have a webcam enabled, um, which again, uh, you'd be going down to the bottom left uh, let's turn off game capture and go back to display capture. You'd be going down to the bottom left and you'd be choosing video capture device. And from there, you'd then select your webcam and boom, up comes your webcam. And from there, you're then able to resize your webcam, drag it around inside the actual preview window and choose uh, how where you'd like to place it and uh, how you'd like it to look. Um, each of these options in sources have a very nice uh, feature when you right click on them, which is called filters. Filters is a very important thing. Um, for microphone, for example, you might want to add in something called a noise gate. A noise gate basically is a threshold which is put on your microphone so it would not pick up uh, the ambient noise and always be transmitting uh, your microphone uh, to the stream. So for example, you might be a fan in the background or some very light typing on the keyboard. You'd be able to add a noise gate. You set a sort of a minimum level on there uh, and it will only activate your microphone when there's enough noise to go past that level. You then have other options. For example, on game capture, you could add in a uh, crop and pad. This allows you to choose how much of the window that you'd want to get cropped off. So for example, if you were to set this up on your webcam, you might find that your webcam is being displayed, displaying a lot to the sides. Uh, you could then just crop off the left and right sides, for example, so that it's more focused on yourself. And that would obviously reduce the actual webcam size uh, so that you're not taking up so much of your game screen. Assuming that you've done this, um, the only thing that you need to do would be to hit the Start Streaming button down at the bottom. And away you go. You'd want to check when you're streaming down here uh, to make sure you'd usually get a little green icon that appears there. You want to make sure that when you're streaming, that icon remains green. 
Um, obviously, if it's going red and amber and stuff, it means that your connection is being throttled, probably, uh, and it's you're hitting your connection cap. So what you'd want to do there is you'd want to go back into settings uh, and reduce your bit rate a little bit. Um, that would probably sort out that issue. You're not going to find, by using NVENC, you're not going to find that you're using uh, any CPU resources or very little. Um, your game would still run pretty much perfectly, uh, and you'd be able to stream at the same time. Uh, and that would obviously then come up. Uh, you'd, you'd then choose uh, the game. So you'd log on to your stream. Um, you'd log on to your stream. Uh, you go back into your browser. You'd navigate to Stream Manager, for example. And here you get your stream preview. You'd have your chat appearing here. Here up here, you can click Edit Stream Info, which allows you to put a title for what your stream is going to be and to name the game which you're going to want to have. So in this case, Edit Stream Info. You can see that I've got this info in here, category Daisy, where you want the game to be appearing. And away you go. Obviously, if you were to have two screens, you'd move this screen over onto your second monitor so that you're able to watch it uh, whilst you're playing on your main screen. Um, if you don't have a second monitor, then I suggest that you, everyone has a mobile phone these days, I'd suggest just downloading Twitch onto your mobile phone. And Twitch has its own chat interface that would then pop up as you start streaming so that you'd be able to monitor chat and uh, interact with your viewers. Nice and simple, pretty easy, uh, and I'll probably leave it at that. That should get you up and running. Um, I'd love it if you uh, would consider subbing to the channel. I mean, obviously, I haven't been using YouTube that much, so this is probably one of my first videos in a long time. I also switch, uh, stream on Twitch. The name is Jippy UK. Uh, it'd be great if you could drop a follow on there. Maybe pop in, say hello, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Uh, and in the meantime, I wish you a very pleasant day.